Hi everyone, happy Sunday. Most of you watching this are just one week away from spring break. Yay, so if you have a bunch of final projects or tests this week, hang in there. Your break is almost here. We don't meet for youth group next week because of spring break. So when I see you next, we will be back out on the parking lot at church. Yay! Hooray for warmer temperatures and longer days. And then the week after that is Easter. So speaking of Easter, if you've been living under a rock, you should know that we are in charge of the Easter sunrise service this year, just like old times, right? Uh, we are pre-recording it this year, so uh, that means this will be the easiest sunrise service to ever help out with um, because you don't have to get up at 5 a.m. on Easter morning. Uh, we are making another video uh, similar to what we did for Christmas Eve. So if you want to participate in that, let me know today. <laughs> I know I said that last Sunday, but I extended it a week. Um, I am starting work on it tomorrow morning. So I really mean it when I say tell me today if you want to roll because tomorrow will be too late. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Our guest speaker today is Nick, so I'm going to give them the floor. Hi, Manchester youth. I'm Nick Reinhardt Swerk, and I am the director of Young Adult and Social Justice Ministries here at Manchester United Methodist Church. And this is my brand new puppy, Baby Thrawn. I'm gonna be talking at you for a little bit in this video, so I thought it might be more interesting and fun. Um, if my brand new puppy got to be my, my illustration today for our lesson. So the topic for tonight's conversation is salvation and redemption. Now salvation is one of those things that's at the core of our faith or our belief. Most people around the world could tell you that Christians believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that we might be saved, right? We all know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life, right? This is what we're talking about when we're talking about salvation. We're talking about Jesus's sacrifice on the cross, right? Which, which covers all of us, right? Which is a new covenant between us and God, where God has entered into human form, right, and created a covenant with God's people. Redemption is an important element of our salvation, right, because God offers salvation to us. There's nothing that we can do that takes away the fact that God loves us so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Right? So when we believe in God and, and Jesus, when we have a relationship with God, right, that's where we find salvation. Redemption, on the other hand, is more about us right? and maybe some things that we've done wrong. So salvation is tied, hey puppy, salvation is tied to this, this idea of sin, right? So some people talk about sin as as doing wrong when we know it's wrong, like when we lie or if we cheat or steal, those are sins. I had a pastor that put it a different way I really liked, and he said that sin is that which separates us from God, separates us from our neighbors, separates us from the best parts of ourself, or separates us from the earth, right? So pollution is this kind of corporate sin that we all participate in, right? Where we're hurting God's creation. But then when I do things that damage my relationship with God or with others, that's also a kind of sin, right? So some Christians believe that, that in the afterlife there's this scale and our good things and our bad things are, are weighed against one another, right? What did you do good versus what did you do bad? Did you get enough points to go to that good place. That's not quite what we believe as United Methodists, right? We don't really think uh, as much with sin and grace as this, as this scale where we have to try to find a medium, 
right? Because we acknowledge that we as humans who have free will are gonna mess up sometimes, right? That's just a part of the deal. No matter how much we try, we're always gonna make mistakes, right? But that's okay because our mistakes aren't, aren't the end of the word because we have the option of redemption, right? This gives us a way to repair that thing that was broken in our sin. It allows us to repair relationship with each other, relationship with ourselves, and relationship with God. I want to use my baby Thrawn as a kind of metaphor. So this is an imperfect example, and I don't mean to compare myself to God. But salvation, in some sense, for Thrawn happened when I decided that I wanted Thrawn to be my puppy, right? I picked him out, and I, I'm taking him home, right? That's God picking us, Jesus sacrificing himself for us. Now, as I'm, I'm spending time with baby Thrawn, he's done some behaviors that are not what I want from a new puppy, right? He doesn't know any better. He's learning these things, just as we as humans are always learning how to get better and be better. So redemption with Thrawn, I'm always ready to forgive his little mistakes, right? When he piddles on the carpet and I, and I tell him that that's not what he's supposed to do, right? I'm not condemning him, right? But there's this option for redemption. Thrawn will, will, will learn how to go on the potty pad, will learn to go outside. He will learn to change, to fix that thing that's in the middle of our relationship, and to do better, right? Redemption is that repenting piece, that admitting we did wrong and turning around and doing it better. Salvation is available to all, but it's up to us to choose to enter in that relationship with God, to choose to live our lives following the example of Jesus. Methodists break this down into three kind of steps. So you can think of, of God's grace and forgiveness of our sin and journey to salvation as a house, right? So on the front porch of the house, we have a bench. And when you're sitting on that bench, you're experiencing God's provenient grace, the grace that is over all creation, the grace that is God creating us and the Holy Spirit within us. When we acknowledge God and when we create a relationship with Jesus, we enter in the doorway of the house. Right? So everyone has salvation on that front porch, but we take a step deeper and this is called saving grace or justifying grace. We are invited into a new way of being with God, a deeper level of salvation by us entering into that relationship. And then once we are inside that house, we have a lifetime of participating in what's called sanctifying grace or God helping us to get better, God instructing us, God teaching us to learn new things to be in better relationships, and to do a little bit better. I want to read a, a Bible story that is Jesus' own words to his disciple that I think tells us a little bit about what salvation looks like in our lives. I'm going to paraphrase the first part. So Jesus talks about, I am the true vine, and my father is the vineyard keeper. He is the gardener. He will remove branches that don't produce fruit and trim the branches that do produce fruit so we can produce even more fruit, right? Like just like in a garden when you trim it to make it grow better. The Bible, the words we have from God are the trimming. That's the instruction on how to grow. And we can't produce fruit on our own, right? You can't cut off a branch from the plant and it still grows. It, it, it would die, right, on the ground. So we can't produce fruit unless we're on the vine, unless we're in relationship with God. If we invite God into our lives and we remain with God, then we will produce lots and lots of fruit. But if we don't, 
right? If we don't participate in our salvation through our action and our relationships, it's like we're cutting ourselves off the branches. So we would we'd wither, right? And God is glorified and we are most happy when we produce the fruit. And then in John 15, 9 through 17, God reminds us that as the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in my love. Right? We follow Jesus' example. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be complete in you and your joy will be complete this is my commandment, love each other as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. That's for us. Jesus has given up his life for us. We are his friends and we should do as he commands us, right? Jesus says, I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you can go and produce fruit so that your fruit can last. As a result, whenever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. Salvation comes when we follow God's example of love, when we participate in God's covenant of love. When some people think of salvation, they really think of this heaven or hell, right? You're saved or you burned. I want to give us one more way to think about this. That pastor I referenced before, he said another thing. He said, we are not punished for our sin, but we're punished by our sin. When we ignore God, when we, when we allow brokenness in our lives, it hurts. We isolate ourselves. We put ourselves into situations that God doesn't want for us. But redemption is always there. There's a pastor I really like. Her name is Nadia Bowles Weber. She used to be a stand-up comic, so she's kind of sassy and, and curses sometimes when she's preaching. And she has this to say. Salvation is about how God continues to reach into the graves we dig for ourselves and pull us out, giving us new life in ways both dramatic and small. God's salvation is available to us. And redemption for those places where we've broken stuff is always there, right? Because in God's eyes, we're a little bit like my new puppy. We're figuring it out. We're learning how to do better. And we're always trying harder in sanctification, trying harder to better follow God's example of love. Will you pray with me? Creator God, thank you for sending your son to die for our sins. Thank you for offering ways for us to fix those things that we have broken. Send us a spirit of love so that we can continue to build relationships with you to fix what's broken in the world and to be an example of how to do better. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Nick. Have a great discussion, everybody. Bye.